Hello and good morning or good evening as we are broadcasting live via the web here, live streaming here on YouTube, Dr. Mandel with you. And today, uh, a beautiful day like every day. And the importance of this video is about you. It's about you understanding your own x-rays. Now, this particular video is going to con be concentrated towards uh, lower back pain, sciatica, herniated discs, disc degeneration, arthritis, whatever condition you are suffering from, which millions of people are and will co have continuous back problems for many purposes, uh, being obese, poor posture, uh, incorrect postural activities, accumulative trauma disorders. Uh, so I'm going to discuss many different x-rays. Every person who has a back should really follow this video. If you start this video, because obviously this is going to be on my channel when you see it, try to continue to see the whole video. This video is going to take a little time, but it's very comprehensive. It's about your x-rays. If any of you have had any kind of back problem, you will have x-rays. Guess what? I can teach you what no one's going to teach you. And so please, let's let's move right on because I really want to move on with this real, real quick. Okay, we're going to head over for the x-rays. I'm going to disappear for you for a while. I'll try to come back a little bit later. But we're going to touch on some anatomy, talk about some common conditions with the back. And then I'm sure you're going to have questions. And again, you can contact me later. All right, let's go ahead and move again forward. Here we go. We're going to teach you a little bit of anatomy first. This is going to be like you're right back in school, but sitting in your own house. Okay, if you look here, uh, I'm going to be able to use a cursor here, which is a nice advantage here. Uh, these are the vertebrae L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. Here is the sacrum area. Uh, just a little bit of anatomy. I'm not going to go into everything. You can review this on their own. Uh, the spinous processes, the body of the vertebrae, uh, uh, their transverse process out here. This is the disc right here. If you look between the vertebrae here, this is where the disc sits. And now what we'll be discussing is we'll, you'll be seeing this disc a lot narrower in certain pictures. We'll be looking from the side view and the front view. This is a front view showing all the five lumbar vertebrae. And this is the pelvis right here. Here's the sacrum. Here's the sacroiliac joint. Most people who have lower back pain have sacroiliac problems. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to keep moving through these as fast as I can. I'll be uh, blowing each one up so you can see it better. Now there's a little more anatomy here. Fifth lumbar vertebrae, sacroiliac joint right here. Here's a crest of the ilium. Here's the top of the hip. Difference between sacroiliac and hip joints. When a lot of people say my lower back hurts, uh, these are different. This is kind of off the, the, the mid lower back, and this is off to the side, the upper side of the leg or the thigh. Uh, so the hip joint and the sacroiliac are different. Uh, this is what we sit on called the ischial tuberosity. This is the obturator foramen. You'll notice that when you look at your x-rays from here, you may notice that these two holes are different. It should be open like this. Uh, if it's extremely uh, closed, uh, that means the pelvis is rotated forward. And if it's extremely wide uh, right here, uh, it means it's gone back. But don't worry about that right now. The most important thing is that they are even and symmetrical okay so we will uh obviously you will go back to these a little later i think it's important that you do this here's a side view of the lower back here is the l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 these are the disc bases disc bases are fairly symmetrical you want the disc to remain thick again we understand that x-ray is only picking up hard tissue it's not picking up the soft tissue like mri is so when these become thin, it's possible, yeah, maybe you do have a disc bulging. Maybe you do have a herniated disc that will not be able to be picked up through an x-ray. So if your doctor says you have a herniated disc, he only took x-rays, he is lying to you or he doesn't know better. These are the facet joints. Very important. These are where the bones sit on top of each other. Okay. Each one has facet joints as you move up and down the spine. Uh, now, obviously, the importance of these is making sure that they're both sitting in the same direction. These are up and down, up and down. Sometimes we'll see it sagittally like this, and the other one will go coronally, sideways. That's called facet tropism. But you want your facet joints to remain the same bilateral. Very important. Uh, this next picture here is going to show you a side view of the lower back area. 
Now, this is really important because this shows you this is really good anatomy. So you can come really learn a lot about your vertebrae. Uh, this is the disc bases. These are the thoracic vertebrae. You have 12 thoracic, five lumbar vertebrae. These are the disc bases, the white, which is the radial loose. I'm sorry, the black, which is the radial lucency between the vertebrae. You notice that they're a little thicker here. See a little thicker here and here and here. And as you come down, they get a little thinner right here. That's even more thinner. Well, that's a big problem. That is disc degeneration. And obviously, when this gets thinner, you have holes back in here. See these little, where I'm marking it right here? These are where the nerves come out of. So as these discs get thinner, called disc degeneration, not only you have less cushion between the vertebrae, but the holes in the back where the nerve structures come off the spine, they become more compressed and irritated, causing sciatica, low back pain, pain in the buttocks. This is a very good chart for you to review. I think it's excellent. All right. Uh, so as we move here, this shows us the vertebrae of the side view of the lower back. Here is L5, L4, L3, L2. You can look at the difference, how this is a little thinner. This can be like a possible compression fracture. Uh, it's definitely thinner. Uh, understand, if you look at the vertebrae, the first thing you want to look at is that we want to look at this picture frame appearance. See the picture frame, the outside white covering of the vertebrae here? What well, shouldn't be like that because when the inside is lighter, that means you, you lack minerals like calcium, osteoporosis. They call it osteopenia. Uh, osteopenia, when you lack the minerals inside the bone, and this can give way to more compression fractures, more load, more problems, okay? So these are the disc bases here, thinner between L4, L5. The L4 vertebrae has slipped forward on L5. This is called a spondylolisthesis, okay? The vertebrae is slipping forward. I'll explain more about that as we progress. Here's a front picture just showing you again the importance of the sacroiliac joints, top of the ilium. If you look here, you can see how this pelvic up here is sitting up higher than this. So when you look at your x-rays, you want to make sure that they are equal in balance. You see these, how they're a little more narrower. That means the pelvis has gone more anterior, but they are fairly symmetrical. Uh, this is the ischium here. Uh, ischial tuberosity under here. Here we have the lesser trochanter of the of the uh, thigh and a greater trochanter of the uh, upper thigh. There's, this is where it goes into the hip, into the acetabulum. This is the head of the femur. Okay, right in here. Really important stuff. Good anatomy to know. Uh, if you look here, we'll blow this up a little bit. Uh, look at the disc degeneration here, L5S1. This is a lateral view of the, of the lumbar spine, L5, L4, L3, L2, and you can't see L1, but look at that degeneration. This is, this is a perfect lower back problem and potentially a problem that is only going to get worse if it's not managed correctly. Now, people think, well, I have disc degeneration. I can do pro prolotherapy and stem cell therapy to help this disc. Uh-uh, there's no way. This disc is degenerated. This is as good as a worn tire. It's not going to grow back. Okay, so you need to maintain. Now, if you have these conditions of disc degeneration, you need to lose the weight. Very, very important. Excessive weight will cause a lot of that uh, condition in there. Just a little bit of anatomy real quick. I think this is these cool pictures, the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve comes off the lower five nerve roots, stems underneath the buttocks right here. This nice redness here. The largest, fattest nerve of the body goes from the lower back into the buttocks, down the thigh, into the leg, all the way down the foot, into the toes. Burning, tingling, numbness. Okay, so obviously as those discs become more degenerative, you can affect that sciatic nerve. Okay, quite interesting. I hope you're enjoying this. This is really good stuff. Uh, if you look at this picture here, this is a front view of the lower back. Now, what we're looking at, that arrow right there, this is your L5 vertebrae. And you notice it's fused with the sacrum. You see how it looks different on this side right here and compared to this side over here? This is called sacralization. Sometimes the body has an anomalies. Uh, we don't know why. Uh, where the lowest vertebrae fuses with the sacrum, giving you only four lumbar vertebrae instead of five. Okay, because the sacrum now is bigger. This is what they call transitional segment, but this is starting, this is like a partial uh, sacralization of this over here looked like this, then we call it a full sacralization. Okay, uh, this is, this shows what people go, can go through. Uh, this is a fusion, putting screws in there. This is a surgical procedure, a graphing bone, quite severe. 
uh, anterior slippage on the vertebrae. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm not going to go too much into that. Uh, here is another picture here showing osteophytes. You see this right here? These arrows are pointing right there. Those are osteophytes, osteophytes, degenerative arthritis, degenerative joint disease, osteoarthritis, arthritis, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when you get osteophytes in the front of the vertebrae, you're not going to have symptoms. But when you get osteophytes, it means that there's, the body is weak, the vertebrae are weak, they're unstable, and um, things are degenerating. So when things degenerate, guess what? Look at this disc right here. This disc is degenerating. So usually when you get osteophytes or spurs coming off in the front, they generally occur in the back as well. These are where the nerves are coming out of. You notice that hole here is smaller. See right here as compared to here? Guess what? The nerves are going through there. So you can't afford to have a lot of degeneration because you're affecting the, the, uh, the nerve root, which is trying to make its way out of the IVF, or what we call the intervertebral foramen. Uh, here is another lateral view, just quick osteoarthritis. Look at that. That's so messy down here. It's all osteoarthritis. The disc is degenerative. You can barely even see the disc. See, you can see the black in here. That's a disc. So here you have L5, L4, L3, L2. Uh, and you can see even between L3, L4, L4, L5, and L5, S1, you can't even see the disc. Well, guess what? This person's symptomatic. You've got a lot of compression here, a lot of arthritic changes. And if you see the picture frame appearance around the vertebrae here, it's more, it's less darker on the inside than the outside. That is osteopenia, osteoporosis as well. Okay, that's why it's so important. You, 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 you listen to those videos, uh, particularly on nutrition, calcium, uh, uh, K2, uh, all those actually important vitamins of uh, vitamin D, making sure your body is assimilating calcium, exercise, weight bearing, all that stuff's important. You can't afford to have that, that degeneration because that will really set yourself up for lots of problems. Here is a front view showing you surgical intervention, screws in there. Oh boy, that's a mess. This is a front view. You can just look at, uh, this is a syndesmophyte. You see right here, an osteophyte comes off Right off, right off the vertebrae like this. When it starts to fuse above and below, right where I'm, I'm cursing it right here, see that? That's called the syndesmophyte. That's where they start to fuse. The vertebrae actually starts to fuse. See down here in the lowest disc, L5, here's the sacrum. Look at that spur here. Look how there's no disc in there. Oh boy, that person's hurting. Uh, a to P view again. Uh, just wanted to show you again here. Look at the degeneration in the hips. These are the hip joints. This is the head of the the femur goes in the acetabulum, very degenerative, lots of very, very symptomatic. Okay, you can just look at all the degeneration. You should have more space in there, and I'll show you on another picture in just a, a minute or so. Uh, this picture, just wanted to give you the, the, the awareness of osteopenia, osteoporosis, what it looks like. You see how light it is on the inside of the vertebrae, on the, vertebrae, on the vertebral bodies. You see the outside here, how dense it is. Okay. That's osteoporosis. That's looking for a compression fracture. Body can just compress and go bang, just, just, just smush on its own. Uh, here's osteophytes again, degenerative arthritis. See how it's trying to make its way to connect with each other through the degenerative process? Okay, just want to throw that out at you. You notice I'm repeating a lot because these are the important things you need to understand. This is what you're going to be seeing in your x-rays. Uh, here's sacroiliac joint here. Here's a sacrum. This sacroiliac sacrum is a little lower here as compared to here. Here's the iliac crest. You can see bowel gas. A lot of times you'll see there's black stuff in here. It's a gas in there. What I like about this, this shows you the last rib of the thoracic. This is showing you the 12th rib, about where the kidneys are, where the spleen is at, where the liver is. These are good landmarks. You should really understand this. This is good stuff. You can come back and review this on your own. <clears throat> uh, as we look here, uh, this is called uh, ankylosing spondylitis. There are people out there who have it right now who are listening. Uh, this is a, uh, carry, a carrying a genetic uh, gene called HLA-B27. HLA-B27 causes this, this ankylosing where this looks like a bamboo spine. Uh, this will not kill you, but it will cause fusion starting in the sacroiliac joints down the lower back, making its way up the spine, causing the vertebrae to fuse with each other, not giving you range of motion. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into that, but a lot of people have this. I would say less than 1% of the world. Um, but um, ankylosing spondylitis. All right. Good anatomy. Look at this here. The greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, acetabulum. This shows you a narrowed uh, joint space, arthritis in the hip joint. You can look at this later. 
just trying to move through these as fast as I can. This is a great picture for you to, to go back to. You really want to know your landmarks. Look at your descending colon, your small intestine, your colon. Look where the kidneys are. When you look at your x-rays, your A to P view, you can just know right about where your kidney is, where your liver is, where your spleen, where your stomach is. This is really important. I think this is really great information. Okay, hopefully you're enjoying this. Uh, moving forward, uh, here is a picture we talked about. The uh, uh, This is an oblique view, <laughs> kind of an angle view, not a front view of the lower back, but an, a, a, like a 45 degree. And what we're looking here is we're looking at, this is called the Scotty dog. Uh, it looks like a dog here. If you look at this dog here, here's the head, here's the tail back here, here's another one here. And we're looking to see here what they call the Parsons interarticularis. When there's a fracture here, you can start developing, or a defect, not only a fracture, but a defect, something you could have been born with. Uh, this is where we start developing spondylolisthesis. And let's just move forward because I know it doesn't really make sense to you now, but I'll uh, go back to it when I come to that picture. Uh, here is more degeneration. Now, the reason why you're seeing so much degeneration, because this is the number one problem with low back pain. Number one. And this is what leads to pain, discomfort, pinching on the nerve. Look how you have no disc space, osteophytes, degeneration. So you'll know what this is if you ever see this again. Trust me. By the time you get done with me, you're going to learn this stuff. Uh, let's just, uh, as a side note, make a little change. Just showing you the curve in the lower back here, the lordosis. Uh, increased lower doses, more of a curve, flat back, sway back. Here's a scoliosis, just showing the difference in the pelvis, one higher up than the other. Just giving you an idea, taking your mind off the x-ray to give you a little perspective of what's going on in the body. Uh, here is the anterior lithesis again. You see this right here? This is a spondylolisthesis. As we talked about that Scotty dog before, you can see how it slips forward. A lot of people have this. A lot of people don't know they have it until they take x-rays. Sometimes you'll be symptomatic in the lower back and say, wow, I never knew I had that. This is a grade one. Uh, if it goes 25 degrees forward, it's a grade one. If it goes 50 degrees forward, it's a grade two. 75 degrees, grade three. Uh, grade four, you're in trouble, okay? Uh, but usually most people have grade ones and there's usually no problem. But again, you got to keep the stomach down. You got to keep that weight down. That's very, very important. There's a Scotty dog again. This is kind of neat stuff. Okay, so we looked at that side view that Scotty dog. When you have a, a defect right in there, that's when the vertebrae starts to slide forward. Okay, you can look at this later. This is good stuff. Um, let's move forward here. Just to show you here a little something different, we realize that when the disc is pinched from a bulging disc, even a degenerative disc, and that thing degenerates, it puts pressure in the nerve. That nerve goes right down and pinches it. Look at the difference between that degenerative disc and that healthy disc. The disc is composed of the annular fibrosis, the outer fibers, the nucleus pulposus, the inner gel. And when these fibers become worn and torn, kind of like a, a donut, if it becomes dried out, it becomes brittle, it can start to tear. And then we start getting compression on that nerve root. Okay, this really shows you just what you're going to learn in medical school here. Again here, very severe. Look at the degenerative disc, degenerative spondylo here. You see how that spondylolisthesis, how it's slipping forward here? That's degenerative. See how the back of the vertebrae are all lined up here? This is the L3, the L, uh, three, L4, but you see how it's not lined up between here and here? So if you see that body going forward on each other, then you know that's a spondylolisthesis. Okay, normally we see it usually L5, S1, the most common, second L4, L5. Okay. Here's another one, L4, L5, spondylo. You can see it's quite common. Okay, but usually when it slips, the disc becomes more narrowed, more compressed. This disc actually, disc actually looks good below. But you see that picture, family parents, again, when you look at your vertebrae, your side views, if you notice that you're getting a lot of this whitening on the outside, lighter, lighter on the inside, you better start increasing dosing that calcium. K2, calcium, uh, your vitamin D, D3. You want to make sure you're getting your calcium. Very, very, very important. And you can't absorb calcium unless you have vitamin D. So most people are deficient in vitamin D. But you need to make sure you're, you're supplementing. Everyone needs a supplement because we don't, you don't, we're not, we're not in the sun anymore, like we were with, like, when we we're like kids. Here's a compression fracture right here. But you see how it's hollow on the inside? There it is, right there. Here's a bigger picture. It's compressed. That's a compression fracture. That that vertebrae just went kabang, just gave out for no reason. Okay, because of lack of calcium inside the bone. All right. So this shows us osteophytes just to give you an idea 
the disk spaces. Uh, this, these disks actually look pretty good here. Okay, but it's just showing you an osteophyte here. Don't worry about this picture. This just shows you degeneration here. Okay, as I said, most people who have low back pain have degeneration. That's that sciatic nerve root again. We showed you that. Uh, right here, this shows us the lumbosacral joint, the L5-S1, most common involved area causing low back pain besides sacroiliac. This is a side view of the lower back showing the sacrum from the side. And down in here would be the coccyx that you sit on down in here. Here's your L4 vertebrae up here. Uh, here uh, shows you, just to give you an anatomy, look how degenerative that disc is between the L5-S1. See it's thicker over here? Just giving your anatomy, right sacroiliac joint, left sacroiliac joint, sacrum. You should know your anatomy, very important. All right, looking at the hip joints. No joint space degenerative. This is, may be a, uh, a prosthesis. May, may need a hip replacement in here. Okay, you can see the joint space here. You don't see it here. Normal hip, arthritic hip. Osteoarthritis, number one arthritic problem. Weight bearing, too much weight, too much stress, too much force, too much load. Uh, injuring the, the joint. Uh, this is just my little picture here in the lower back. We don't need to see that. Uh, here it again, and I keep pushing this. Uh, look at that that uh, degenerative change here, osteophyte. Okay, no disc right here. And I keep pushing that because that is generally where we see most of our problems. Uh, you can see here, this is a uh, spondylo, spondylitis. This, uh, as we see here, uh, this is like an ankylosing spondylitis. See how it's starting to form here? Okay, you get to kind of get that bamboo spine. Let's see if I can come back here. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, here is um, uh, arthritic change surgery. Here is, you can see osteopenia. I'm going to kind of skim through these a little quicker. The vertebral body margins. Looking at that, okay, you can see you want to make sure they're symmetrical. These are the pedicles, making sure that these things are all there. All right, this is an MRI. I want to throw this in, showing a herniated disc, what it looks like compression right there. You won't see a herniated disc on x-rays. If you just do, on, on x-rays, you only see it on MRIs. X-rays only pick up the uh, hard tissue. This is showing imbalance of the pelvis, showing one leg longer than the other. Here is a perfect example. You see right here are these obturator foramens. You see how this is more narrow than this? This is very, very common. Thousands of patients I've seen have this imbalanced leg length. You see how this hip is higher than this? Now it's these hips are normal. The, the leg length is normal, but you're, you're all torqued. You're all rotated. Look how high this pelvic is and look how wide it is from here to here compared to here to here. You notice you may look at your front view of your pelvis and you'll see this. This is, this is pelvic imbalance. This will throw the leg length off, making one leg longer than the other. And this will cause low back pain, sacroiliac problems, uh, cause problems in the sciatic nerve. Uh, on my video, on my channel, imbalanced pelvis check that video out there's great exercises you can do on your own some self-help stuff but this is a very very pro common problem so what do you do doctor gives you anti-inflammatories muscle relaxers painkillers this is never going to get better this is like driving driving around with your tires out of alignment you need to get to the root of that problem very important okay degenerative arthritis you notice that i'm pushing degenerative arthritis Degeneration, 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 spurs, bone spurs, narrow discs, those DDD, degenerative disc disease. De DJD is degenerative joint disease. So they go hand in hand. This is degenerative disc and degenerative joint. Look at the osteophytes here. Look at the osteophytes. This is problems. Now you notice you see these osteophytes here, how they come out. The nerve comes out right here. I didn't tell you that. Okay, I only showed you on the side view where it comes out. But in the front view, they come out on both sides. Okay, now as this becomes narrowed, this right here, that nerve's being compressed. This is serious. You can't afford to let your body go. You're going to be in pain. You can't afford. This shows, this, here's the abdominal aorta. Uh, here is compression fracture. But this is really osteopenia. This is really osteoporosis. No calcium in here. Look at the picture frame of parents. If you ever see this picture frame of parents, another compression fracture it looks like here, starting, or had, an old one. But if you see that picture frame of parents, really hot, really black on the inside, darker on the outside, you are deficient in mineral calcium. I promise you. 
Uh, here is just a, another anatomical thing to look at. You'll look at this later. I don't want to take time up on there. I know we're going a little long. We're finishing up quick, um, quickly. But here is surgical. Uh, come, here is a fusion between the L5 and the sacrum. All right. That's surgical. Boy, that's serious. Uh, talking about the cytic nerve root again. When you have degeneration that affects that cytic nerve root, you can see where the nerve root makes its way down, comes right down the back of the leg. Okay, very painful, tingling, numbness, cramping. Uh, here it just shows you a scoliosis from the front view, 52 degrees, quite severe. Just want to show you what it looks like because when you have imbalance, even when the pelvic is imbalanced, like one pelvic is sitting higher than the, than the other, that can cause scoliosis. The pedal foundation, what sits on below has to change. Whatever moves on below above has to change. So that's why we consider these types of balances important. Sacroiliac, very, very important. You understand, you can see how this pelvic is higher here. This ilium here that compared to this. Sacroiliac joint, very common. Very common. Here, the hip joint's a little higher up than here. Hip joints look good bilateral. All right, we're making our way, almost finishing up here. Sacroiliac joint, you look at that again later. Uh, I wanted to bring this in here, very important, showing what happens when the hip, when the pelvic sits higher on one side, the hip uh, spikes up here, how the shoulder compensates on one side because of the change here, how the knee rotates. This can all start from the pedal foundation. If you are pronated where you notice you're wearing the outside of your heels out more quicker than the inside, uh, you, your arch has dropped. Uh, you may even have pain into the, into the uh, heel or underneath the foot. Uh, when your foot everts, uh, this is everting here, uh, when you are pronated and when your foot's collapsing, that can throw rotation of the, of, the, of the knee, affecting your hip, affecting all the way up. So make sure that you're not wearing crappy shoes. If you're not wearing good, healthy shoes without a good art support, you can be in trouble. Here's another spondylolisthesis. See how it's slipping right there? Okay, I want to throw that out at you. That's really important just to have an understanding. Uh, we're going back to a little bit of osteoarthritis in the spine. Normal vertebrae, normal vertebrae, normal disc, normal disc. Intervertebral disc, healthy spine, osteoarthritic. That's what we're showing you on the x-rays. Bone spurs, bone spurs, narrow disc. Those are the most important things you need to pick up. Okay, bone spurs, bone spurs. All right. So let me, let me bring myself back in here. I really think we covered um, a lot of really good information here. Uh, let me see if I can bring myself back. Okay, hello there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it's quite complex and over alarming that there's so much I threw out at you, but go back. I put those anatomical uh, instructional uh, parts of your hips and your low back so you can have good anatomy understanding. Uh, understanding the anatomy is number one. Most doctors out there do not really understand the anatomy real well, particularly medical doctors that are not orthopedists, plain medical doctors, internists, uh, chiropractors, osteopaths, orthopedic surgeons, neurologists are going to, not even so much neurologists. Uh, so really, what is this all about? This is about you. This is about you understanding one important thing, your own body. You don't have to worry about anything else. Don't worry about anyone else's body. Worry about your body body. This is your body. Know as much as you can about your spine. When they take x-rays of you, they tell you what your x-rays are. You read the report. You have no idea what they're talking about. But now you can go in there. You can look at it. You can have an understanding. Do I have disc degeneration? What do I need to do? Do I have disc spurring? Uh, how do I become proactive? How do I do things now to start decompressing what can I do to keep inflammation off the nerve? Now that I know what I have, this is my body. This is my castle. I have to live in here. You have to live here. So now you can be proactive because now you know the data. You know the facts. You know everything going on. So that's why I tell you to be proactive. I've got great subscribers out there. I tell you, I love every one of you. I've got Great people, great people, just the messaging and, and the, the communication and people out there and, and chatting uh, below the videos and helping each other. You're, you're very educated. I could always learn from you as well. Trust me. But when it comes down to your anatomy, when you buy a house, you want to know how it's built. 
You want to know how it's custom. You want to know how it's secure. You want to know all the rooms. You want to know all the functions of each room, how to operate it, how to operate, even opening up a door in your house. Well, guess what? These are your doors. These are your mechanics. These are your pieces inside your body. Understand it. Know it. No doctor is going to come out and teach you about this. I am because I care about you and I love you. So I ask you to please subscribe. Give me a big like here. Check out my Facebook, Motivational Doc on Facebook. Uh, and, and I appreciate if you want to put any positive comments on that page. It's really growing, and it's, I, I try to go out there and help as many people and responding to those questions more as best as I can. Uh, leave your questions here below. I'm sure you get a lot of response. And most important, stay blessed, stay healthy, continue to be proactive, and we'll be with you real soon. And I really want to thank all of you for, for hanging in there through this whole video, but I'll make you one promise. It's going to be good for you in the end because you're going to become more educated, and this is where it's at. When you become more educated about your body, you're going to reap the rewards. Bye-bye now.